Thanks for waking up and coming to see this movie. It's really, I, I, much like the character in the story, I, I tried to get here to introduce it, and I just didn't make it. <laughs> so I commend you for making it. Thanks, thanks a lot. Great, so we're just going to take some questions from the audience. We ask that you just raise your hand nice and high so that I can see it. If, you, if possible, please stand and speak in a loud, clear voice so we don't waste time having to repeat all the questions. So who has a question for Jim? Hi, Jim. Hi there. <laughs> Well, uh, I haven't been to a ton of movies. I've tried my best to see a lot, but I think there there are a lot of comedies here this year. This year, sure, particular, yes. Um, Me, Earl, the Dying Girl, Dope, um, uh, The Overnight. Uh, there's what's that? I mean, there's a ton. There's a lot. There's a lot. Um, but thank you. I, I'm glad to be part of. Um, I think I I I teach uh, screenwriting at the School of Visual Arts and. Um, uh, I always tell my students, uh, I think a sense of humor is important no matter what your story is. Um, so I, I, I always try to keep that in mind a little bit. Yes, you're on the aisle. Uh, I just want to say I saw 12 movies. This is my last one before I go home. And thanks for showing me the only guy I'd go out with. <laughs> <laughs> She means a charmer. Um, I'm just curious how it was working with those two little girls. They were so cute. Like, how did you find them, and how was it working with them? And they aren't sisters. No, no, those are twins. Those are twins. Uh, Andrea and Gia Gatsby, they, um, I had found them through the casting director, Jessica Kelly, uh, and I would love to say it was an exhaustive search, and you know, we had some great, uh, fantastical story, but they were just, uh, they were, they came in pretty early in the auditioning process. I said I wanted identical twins. Everyone told me not to hold my breath. It's going to be hard to find identical twins to act. Uh, but these little girls came in and they were, they not only uh, um, had a great mind for memorizing lines, but they were uh, just so sparkly and natural in front of the camera. I've seen, I've seen other kids that have some on-camera experience, and they're they were very um, uh, stuck in an idea of I think what adults <coughs> had already told them uh, what to do. But these girls, they were really sort of free. Uh, they didn't have any preconceived sort of training or ideas. They were just lonely kids. And Jermaine, they started calling Jermaine Dad right away, <laughs> which he was a little weird out of <laughs> But their chemistry on screen had, was the same off screen. He, he was a, he was so they had endless energy and he had infinite patience, and they just got along really well. Yeah, I love the script, and I'd like you to talk us through the process of developing it to the point that we hear it on the screen, and also about the casting of the lead. Well, thank you. I uh, the script was. Um, drawn from a lot of places, drawn from a lot of personal experience. Uh, I wrote the first draft pretty quickly, put it away, and then came back to it and realized that, oh, I need to, it was too autobiographical. Uh, I, need to, I need to turn this into a story. This isn't just therapy for Jim. Um, so, uh, once I was ready to try to make it, I found um, um, producers that were really helpful, and we, um, um, a beach side that produced the film, some Shelton, who are here today. Um, uh, we started compiling lists, and I knew very early on, Jermaine was on the list, you know, you, uh, and we didn't know if he would be interested, but I had a feeling that if he was interested, I always say, if the actor's interested, they're right for the part. Uh, and I knew if he would be interested, uh, knowing his comedy and his work, that it would be a, a great fit. And he ended up being interested. I always wanted Jessica Williams for this, who I 
I, I, I got lucky. I, this cast is, they're all, all who I wanted. Sometimes it doesn't work out that way, but um, I got my first choices for this cast. I always want Jessica Williams. Always, I always wanted Regina Hall. I just, um, I thought they would fit for the parts, and I think they all do fit really well. And Michael Chernis and Stephanie Allen. Um, Michael Chernis, who played Gary, I've been a fan of for a long time. He's just, I've seen him in so many things in New York on stage. He's just a fantastic actor. So film and comics are both very visual mediums, and I was wondering if you could talk about the art that we see in the, in the film, and where in the process were they, did they come about, if they were before you started shooting, or during, or... Well, the, uh, the School of Visual Arts has a great, uh, great history of uh, or, um, cartooning. That's, um, when I was writing the script, it started with, uh, uh, a couple of years ago, there was, they had a, a retrospective of the graphic novel at SVA, and I just learned this history. I mean, Art Spiegelman taught there. A lot of the greatest um, graphic novelists taught at SVA at one time. So I had that to draw from. I thought that was some interesting, great, and analogous to uh, filmmaking, uh, which I know something about, but I didn't want Will to be a writer, because that, that's very internal and hard to portray visually, and I didn't want him to be a filmmaker, because you can't take care of kids and make a film at the same time. But you can. It just felt right because it's a very solitary, uh, yet visual medium, graphic, graphic novel, comics. But uh, that, Ray Williams, the comic, the guy, the guy who did the drawings for uh, Will Henry's character, was a screenwriting student of mine. And uh, I guess Gray and I probably were, he and I, we started working before anyone else before. Uh, as soon as I knew that someone wanted to produce this, I talked to Greg because I knew there was a lot of work to do. These drawings were, um, there's a lot, they, they're hard to make drawings like this. It takes time. And um, Greg is just a fantastic artist and uh, he wanted direction. Um, so I would scribble the drawing in a stick figure form and then he would make them and we would email back and forth. Um, it was a fun process that helped me kind of get ready to direct a little bit because Gray actually wanted me to tell him what the frame was, so I had to start thinking about um, composition and it helped with my relationship with the cinematographer. So it was fun. It was fun and uh, helpful process to make the film. Uh, yes, and Gray. So how much was Janine allowed to add light? It really feels like so much of him came through it that I couldn't help. I encouraged all of these actors because I wanted I wanted this to be I wanted to be funny. Um, uh, that was important to me, and that's why I, I think these are all really funny actors in the movie. And I encouraged them to um, throw stuff in, and a lot of my favorite lines are. Um, I, I, I was here, I was listening, and I, everyone, I, it seemed to get a really good laugh when she only had one rule, don't call her. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jimmy and Evan and um, uh, you know, Kat saying what's up uh, to the twins, that was her, um, and then Jimmy throwing that into the low. Uh, there was a lot, they, all of these actors are so good, and they're, they never threw in, you know, sometimes funny people, they just, they don't care about the joke more than the moment, but the, all these people, they, everything was in line with what the scene was about, so I had a lot of usable stuff. And Jermaine just, uh, you know, added a lot of funny little lines. Um, he's all throughout this movie. Yes, in the white. I just had a question about Gary's character. Um, I was just wondering what your Well, I'm a, uh, well, first of all, I, uh, Gary, I, I, Gary, I want Gary to be funny. Um, I, I kind of see Will and Gary on opposite ends of a, the same spectrum. They're both storytellers. They're both 
uh, use, they're both autobiographical storytellers, but Will is very internal and Gary is external. We don't get to see any of his work. I wish, if we had time, I really wanted to film uh, uh, Private Thoughts Public Spaces, uh, his, his one man show. Uh, but we didn't have time to film that. But I thought they're sort of, uh, Charlie likes artists. Uh, and storytellers, and she's a, there's something, uh, I think the guys have something in common. Uh, I won't, and I didn't want, he's not, a, he's not a villain. He's like a thoughtful, thinking person who knows this is an uncomfortable situation that they all have to work through. You know, he's not ready in the moment that Gary, you know, Gary is the type of guy that wants to talk about it right now uh, and when he first meets. Uh, Will, and obviously Will's not ready at that point to have a thoughtful discussion about uh, what's going on. But, you know, I, I, first and foremost, I cast all these people because I think they're just talented. So, um, and, you know, I didn't want him to be uh, just a joke. Uh, and I, I knew with someone as good as Michael Churns, you you feel, you know, he, he brings a lot of depth. He's, he's just a thoughtful, he's just got a lot of soul and uh, intelligence. But, um, you know, that's why I don't think of Gary, yeah, I think, I, th I think Charlie has a type and it's uh, artist. Is back here? just wanted to comment that your choice of the streetscape is more than the moon, excuse me, for the different, different parts of the film, the way the characters are involved. The street, the... The different scenes of the neighborhood. Oh. Thanks, I had a chance to, uh, all those locations were real. I'm, uh, a lot of it was in Cobble Hill, Brooklyn, and then actually in Astoria. I know all those places, and it felt, uh, it was, I, I'm from Indiana. I've lived in New York for almost 15 years. I was nervous making a New York movie. I finally, but I, um, I told myself, uh, I, I know enough about Brooklyn now, I can try. Time for two more questions. Gentleman right here. Yeah, um, I just wanted to defend the score. Uh, I thought it, was the, it sounds like it was a trio or a quartet. And I just want to know how you work with the score because it was perfect, pitch perfect throughout the film. The score is by Mark Orton, who has done a lot of fantastic films, features, documentaries. Um, and uh, it was a, uh, he, he uh, most prop. He did Nebraska, that was his last uh, film. Um, it was a process of, I mean, I loved his work already, and we would just email back and forth. He's in Portland, I'm in New York. Uh, we would, the guiding principle for the music in our first initial conversation was I said, I want a music that represents Will's short pants. Uh, that was a beautiful accident that happened actually. The costume designer uh, came to me uh, and said, uh, you know, Will's pants are too short. I think I can fix them, but it was a day we didn't have any time. I was like, just, let's just keep them short. Uh, we'll figure it out. Does it, uh, does it look weird? Maybe I should throw a line in about it. But it was perfect. It was perfect for the moment in the film. And then it became this guiding principle for the music. Sort of like, I want it to sound like it's, it's working out, but it's not perfect. <laughs> There's still some room to grow. Mm -hmm. I guess not, not, because it tends to be short. But. <laughs> and our final question, up in the very back over there. Those are my kids. Uh, my Molly and Grover. Yeah. yeah, and they were around a lot, and they, they watched a lot of cuts with me, and they're like, that's, I love this part, or this isn't emotionally truthful, and you really think it then. Um, uh, but it was, you know, this story is uh, um, inspired from um, from life, and, uh, you know, they get it. They, uh, so I wanted to dedicate it to them. That's lovely. So thank you very much. For